the Cadent 9750 PTX rotary joint. Please follow your company's safety procedures whenever working on Cadent Johnson products. Review the entire video instruction before proceeding with the installation. Please wear recommended personal protection equipment, which includes safety shoes, hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, and earplugs. These are the major components of the 9750 PTX. Journal Flange To begin installation, chase all holes on the end of the journal using a tap. Make sure all the old gasket material is cleaned off the end of the journal and that the pilots are clean. Dry fit the journal flange to the journal. Make sure the journal flange fits over the journal and bottoms out against the journal end. Check cap screw length. Place cap screw through the hole in the journal flange and measure the exposed threads. Using contact adhesive, glue journal flange gasket onto journal flange. Position journal flange onto journal end. Lubricate cap screws with the Never Seize compound and install them through the journal flange and into the journal. Tighten journal flange cap screws to the specified torque value using a star pattern tightening sequence. Start out with a low torque value and increase the torque value in three steps until the specified torque is achieved. This will ensure that the journal flange is mounted squarely on the end of the journal. Seal plate. Test fitting of the seal plate was completed during the quality inspection at Cadent Johnson before the parts were shipped. Using contact adhesive, glue seal plate flange gasket onto seal plate. Position seal plate onto the journal flange. Lubricate cap screws with Never Seize compound and install them through the seal plate and into the journal flange. Tighten seal plate cap screws to the specified torque value using a star pattern tightening sequence. Start out with a low torque value and increase the torque value in three steps until the specified torque is achieved. This will ensure that the seal plate is mounted squarely on the end of the journal flange. Ring Bracket Chase all holes using a tap. Check cap screw length. Place cap screw through the hole in the ring bracket and measure the exposed threads. Compare that dimension to the tapped hole in the bearing cover to make sure the cap screws do not bottom out in the tapped hole. Lubricate the cap screws with Never Seize compound. Position the ring bracket against the bearing cover. Secure ring bracket to the bearing cover with cap screws. Tighten ring bracket cap screws to the specified torque value using a star pattern tightening sequence. End cap assembly and seal ring. In preparation for the assembly, clean the sealing surfaces of the seal ring, nipple, and seal plate Please note that there are four 5 16 socket head cap screws that secure the end cap assembly to the ring bracket. Place your hand through the nipple in the end cap assembly and balance the seal ring on your fingertips. Position the end cap assembly and seal ring into the ring bracket while aligning the holes in the end cap flange with the studs protruding from the ring bracket and the smaller 5 16 holes tapped into the ring bracket. the end cap assembly will not seat firmly against the ring bracket. There should be approximately a half inch gap between the end cap flange and the ring bracket. Lubricate four 5 16 socket head cap screws and pass them through the holes in the end cap flange. Tighten the screws to the specified torque value using a star pattern sequence. 
as the screws are tightened. The half inch gap will eventually decrease to zero as the seal ring is loaded with spring force. Consult the Cadent Johnson drawing for the specified X dimension. Then check the X dimension and seal ring alignment. Please consult Caden Johnson if the X dimension or the seal ring alignment is not in specification. Body and support tube. Note, there are two different options for installing the support tube. Option one, for installations where there is sufficient room between the end of the dryer journal and any obstructions. Slide the tapered end of the support tube through the end cap assembly and into the journal, leaving approximately 12 inches of it protruding from the end cap assembly. The milled notch on the end of the support tube should be at the 12 o'clock position. Lubricate support tube taper with Never Seize Compound. Lubricate the body O-ring with the silicone O-ring lubricant and place it into the O-ring gland in the face of the body. Position the body over the support tube, making sure that the slotted grooves in the support tube are aligned and fit into the pins in the body socket. There may be one or four pins in this location. Position the tab washer onto the hollow bolt so that the bent tabs will be pointed towards the body. Lubricate the threads on the hollow bolt with Never Seize and then thread it onto the support tube. Position the bent tabs into any of the four holes in the body as the hollow bolt is tightened. Making sure the body O-ring is still in position, lift the body and position it over the studs protruding from the ring bracket. Lubricate the studs with Never Seize and secure the body with hex nuts. Tighten the hex nuts to the specified torque value using a star pattern tightening sequence. Tighten the hollow bolt to 300 pound-feet. When tight, bend the two tabs on the tab washer against the two flats on the hollow bolt. Tap into position using a punch. Option 2. Installing the support tube from inside the dryer. With the body already in position, hand the support tube tapered end first through the manway to the person in the dryer. Pass the support tube down the journal and into the body. Continue to install the support tube by making sure the weld bead is in the 12 o'clock position inside the dryer and aligning the slotted end of it with the pins in the body socket and pushing it into position. There may be one or four pins in the body socket. Position the tab washer on the hollow bolt so that the bent tabs will be pointed towards the body. Lubricate the threads on the hollow bolt with Never Seize and thread it into the support tube. Position the bent tabs into any of the four holes in the body as the hollow bolt is tightened. Tighten the hollow bolt to 300 pound feet. When tight, bend two tabs on the tab washer against two flats on the hollow bolt. Tap into position using a punch. Head. Spray contact adhesive on the head gasket and place it into position on the body. Position head onto rotary joint body. The head can be positioned in 45 degree increments to accommodate various piping considerations. Lubricate cap screws with Never Seize compound and secure the head to the body. Tighten the cap screws to the specified torque value using a star pattern sequence. 
vertical siphon pipe and support bracket. Inside the dryer, make sure the O-ring in the support tube is lubricated and in position. Slide vertical siphon pipe and support bracket over the end of the support tube. The vertical siphon pipe will engage the O-ring as it's installed. Center the weld bead on the support tube between the flanges on the support bracket. Make sure the siphon pickup shoe is at the bottom of the dryer and then tighten the fasteners that are located on the support bracket flange to the specified torque value. Loosen the clamping bolts on the siphon pickup shoe. Make sure the siphon pickup shoe is pointed into the direction of the dryer rotation. Place a measuring gauge between the dryer shell and the siphon pickup shoe and rest the pickup on the measuring gauge. When the proper clearance is obtained, tighten the clamping bolts to the specified torque value. Check siphon assembly clearance to ensure that it will not hit any obstructions in the dryer during rotation. There should be a minimum space of one inch between the end of the turbulator bar and the side of the pickup fitting and between the opposite side of the pickup fitting and the dryer head. Make sure the siphon assembly clears all counterweights attached to the dryer head. This completes the installation of a 9750 PTX rotary joint and it's now ready for piping. Please make sure all tools and debris are removed from the dryer before exiting.